<laughs> Jane said I was supposed to do that. Hang on. Uh, hi everybody. <laughs> That's my Joel's impression. Um, uh, thank you for joining. Whoever's joining, we'll, we'll wait a second while people get on to get into the heart of what we want to talk about. Come on in. The um, water's lovely. The water is lovely. And we are live. Um, yes, the first thing I want to say is that everybody that has done the hot tub so far, I've asked what they want to drink because I want everybody to have something they want to drink. Yeah, she's a very genial host. Uh, Mary suggested a dirty martini. And I don't normally drink martinis, but... Mm, but we're also, we gotta be, yeah, we're gonna have to make our way down the mountain at some yeah. point. Yeah, we'll be good. Woo. So, yeah, um, so we're having dirty martinis. I hope you'll join us with something. Hi, Mary. Um, Mary's oh, on with you Mary. Can, I see. You can yeah. see who's, it all pops who's up joining in. in. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Uh, hi, Dan. Um, so, uh, Mary and I. Hi, oh, Susan. hi, Susan. Hi, Mary. Um, uh, Mary and I, some of you might know, some of you might not, but we met when I was casting Elena Undone, hmm. along with a couple other bitches, but uh, <laughs> was it was all me, it was my show. It was a fruitful room. It was, was a fruitful room. I think I got three years worth of work out of that audition. I know, so. you did, it's true. Hallelujah. And we actually read together, because when we were auditioning, we? yeah, we were doing Elena Undone, I was the reader. No way, no. I thought you were behind the camera. I didn't know. No. Well, I was the reader. So, uh, so then we did Elena and Dunn together, mm -hmm. and then uh, you had a role in Method. It was a small role, but you did have a role in Method. Yes. And then when I was writing Crazy Bitches, I was like, I have to. Oh, hey Deborah and Janet and oh. Pat. Hi, ladies. Hello. Nice to see you. Thank you for checking in. Um, but I was like, I have to write Mary a role because she's funny and she's endearing and she's a friend, and I just want to work with people I love. Um, so that was my impetus. Thank you. And then I and I wrote and Mary a role, and then she was wondering why. I was like, this this role is the girl who has sex with everybody, without any kind of discrimination. That was a gift. <laughs> that was a gift to you. To, you know, to get the moths uh, out there, really. Yeah. So something would happen. Yeah, and you got a redo. How do you mean I got a redo? We did a pickup day. Oh, yeah, that's true. True. Yeah. So uh, Actually, I was driving, you know, I was doing a wine tasting in Malibu today and I drove back along that road and it brought back all the memories of filming Crazy Bitches because it was just in this incredible environment. Yeah. It's all the bits of LA that you love because it feels like California, you yeah. know. It just oh, it was the it was one of the most fun sets actually I think I've ever had. Yeah, we had a really good time and, yeah. and actually it was stressful for you though. Well, it was that. yeah, it was stressful that was for me. I, I did cry. I cried. Yeah. I cried one day. You did, but that's yeah, good that. going. Mm. You're supposed to cry on yeah. a Friday, <laughs> whether or not you're filming. It's so true. Yes. Oh my God. Well, yeah, that was a total fun time, and actually, we all all stayed friends, yeah. which is amazing for a film shoot. Usually, you get really bonded, but then everybody sorts of goes their own way. Yeah. yeah. And we didn't. I mean, we're actually, unless she's still working, we're supposed to be having dinner with Naya Wallace, who plays Dory in Crazy Bitches. We're having dinner with her tonight. And then she's doing hot tub on Saturday. Oh, is she? Yes. Oh, I wonder we could have doubled up. Well, you'll the be tub. here. Well, you I can will jump be here. in. Yeah. Oh, hey, Sheila. Oh, Sheila. Sheila, Andrea, and Andrea Jean. And Jean. Ah, we love you guys. Hello. Um, so, crazy bitches was fun. Mm -hmm. And then what? And then what happened? I didn't get any money for anything to make, so I sat around for three years. Yeah. So I couldn't employ you. <laughs> Changed my whole career dried up. Come on, work a bit harder. No, that's not true. Nicole's been giving you work too. That's true. Although, although I probably won't be in her next one to be honest. I'm just not. Fam I'm just not famous enough. She has to do what she has to do, and yeah. I totally understand that. And also, kind of, I'm interested actually. Here might be a topic of discussion. Okay. Which is the career of an artist also is one of these elastic careers in that you can be an actor for a while and completely, you know, go away from it or a director for a while and go away from it because of, you know, market forces. And when you come back, you are better because of you're going away often. Is now, that, it, you don't believe that necessarily, but in any other career, if you go away, you get a bit stale, you know, all the rest of it. But I think because we are linked to the human condition as much as we can be, there's no argument Again, go over. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you're just gonna go I'm not supposed to yeah. say what's on the altar cube. <laughs> we are having. I was told I should talk about wine. Dirty martinis. Thank you. 
Why do you like a dirty martini, Mary? I guess I don't really like the olives. There's food in it. As well. do, you, do you want my olives? Oh, we do. Do you really not want them? Stick your finger in. Okay. Thank you. Um, you can have the other one too. I'm already drunk. You can probably yeah, tell. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so we're having dirty martinis. But you're right. You know, I think that um, I think that if you're better, you're better because what we do actually is. And I was talking about this in my chat the other day. Um, but I think that life experience makes you a better artist. Yeah. And that sounds like it could be the desperate fumbles of somebody who's like, oh God, I haven't worked for three years. But I honestly believe it. I think it's the, one of the only careers where you can go away and come back and go away and come back and actually slot in at a level, which yeah. had you been plugging away for all those three years, you might have reached that level. Yeah. It just, there's so many weird, things that come into what makes success success and you have to define yeah. that yourself as well. I agree and I think you know it just gives you a little more um, drive huh. you know if you've taken time off and you're coming back in or even if you've had time forced off you know like I'd like to work every year but it's very hard to get films financed and uh, so I don't work every year. It has driven me this year to go okay how do I create what I need so yes. that I can get back on a set and what are the parameters that I have what you know do I have to make it smaller do I have to go like you know the VR short was a short film I haven't done a short film since 2007 but you did VR which is really smart which is new yeah no you're not yeah. you're not sticking to the same way of doing things you're changing up which is yeah. which is what Madonna did Even I know me and me and Madonna we're not that far off if and in any crisis, you say, "What would Madonna do?" Yeah, you usually come except up with something. for adopting the Malawi child because I don't want kids. Okay, I, nothing against kids for those of you who have. I don't. I don't want kids. But um, but what have you been doing to keep your? You know, you sort of still have to keep the creativity alive. You yes. still have to keep the juices yes. flowing, right? Totally. Because yeah. otherwise, who are you? And where? I, I, you know, I just feel like I would shrivel up and go away if I didn't actually have an yeah. artistic outlet. Yes. I think there gets to be a point. Oh, can you hear us? Ho holding for the helicopter. <laughs> Gail so is driving and listening. Oh, watch the road, Gail. <laughs> oh, you're oh. driving from Vegas. Somebody's driving from Eric. Vegas. Did you say it was Gail? Here's, here's Vegas. Here's to Vegas. <laughs> I hope you're leaving behind some memories, Gail. Hey, did you win any money? <laughs> Gail keeps promising she's going to win the lottery. and To make, fund your next yeah. film. But well, yeah, I'll toast to that, for sure. Um, so, I mean, I know that you were doing a, a play that was very well received, which yes. I was so impressed. I was so impressed. Thank you. I was impressed with the fact that you wrote it, you starred in it, you produced it, you put it together, you made it happen, you got the grants. Tell us about that. I kind of can't quite believe it's happened, but it has. I'll tell you the nutshell version. I don't know how much time we've got, but I will ramble no, no. on. Like ramble? It's ramble all right. I'll cut rambler. you off and get bored. Well, Alba says hi. Hello. As you know, or you don't know, or maybe, I have been clearing parties for four years talking about sexual assault. I've been oh, involved. I know. I've, I've had that with meth head. Don't worry. Okay. I'm totally with you. Yeah. yeah. So, so clear, clear, clear the audience. <laughs> clear the audience. <laughs> go ahead. Kill go, my hot tub. Go up. away now. It's going to get serious. No. Um... Yeah, so I think there's a real, there's something about writing your first play and not have it happen overnight that meant that for this particular survivor, it had to be slow. We had said at the very start, you know, you it goes at your pace. It doesn't go at the pace a show needs to go to. And that's kind of professionally precarious for anybody who really gets involved in it. And we did a number of like dip your toe in the water things to go. I'm not qualified to hold you through what this experience is going to bring up. And although you really want to tell the story, at some point your needs and the needs of the play are going to go in different directions and you're more important. But I also want to protect my product right. as well, you know, and, and, right. and have it so that it's only healing. Um, so anyway, you, you probably, if you've tuned in, you probably know some of the background of it, but actually getting it done just became one of these things where I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to talk about it I'm not gonna have a platform unless it's right I'm very careful who I talk to about it now I'm very careful who writes about it now because it has to be done in the right thing if it's talking about me it kind of doesn't matter but I think I've just it's interesting I've been exploring some boundaries in myself which is why this story chimed explain that a lot of people say 
Are you doing this play because you've been sexually assaulted? No. And I haven't. Yeah. I haven't. Yeah. But the amount of people I know who have, and the amount of people who've come out of the woodwork because I'm doing it, and the amount of thoughts I have about why silence and why shame and all of these things mean that, I don't know, it's just created more... I'm interested now in transformative stories because mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in that. Mm -hmm. And it sounds rather noble and lofty. No, no, no. But it's no. true. I mean, I'm interested in dumb, stupid comedy about unicorns too, and I can't wait to do that next. Yeah. But, but anyway, uh, what's, what's an interesting part of it? Doing it at the theatre, we had six days. Tell them where you did it. Uh, Festival Theatre Edinburgh, which is... Edinburgh's very prestigious. You know, I was... It's very prestigious. To get in there is huge. It's lovely. Huge. Yeah. And it's a massive glass-fronted building. And, you know, when we got there, it has, like, War Horse, Miss Saigon, and all these massive posters. And, really, it was very difficult to go, you know, I should go forward with self-belief. <laughs> because it was terrifying to get into and go, oh, it's real. It's real, and people have paid. And, oh, God, what if it's awful? Anyway, we ran it. We had four days to rehearse it, and I'd learnt it in a shed over a month because I knew it had to be ready so a director could move it. And then we had four days to rehearse it. We probably ran it four times. We got into the theatre, we ran it twice. Mm. The rest of it was tech. Right. I'd phoned up this guy and said, look, it's supposed to be a rehearsed reading, and I don't want it to be a rehearsed reading. Right. One, I think they're really boring. Sorry. They are boring. Totally no, they boring. can be extremely boring. They also invite only, it means that all your pal, which is amazing, right. all your friends come, and they did come to heroin as well. But all industry people come because they're so passionate about the, the promise of work. But I also wanted it to be a proper fanfare right. for the person behind it. Yeah. And that's the most important thing. I love that. Yeah. So anyway, we just tried to pull it out of a bag, but somebody who's a brilliant lighting designer said, oh, just buy me a bottle of whiskey. Oh, nice. Somebody who I worked with when I was 26, the first time I could ever employ anybody as a stage manager, I was like, will you do it? And he was like, yeah, I'll do it. So I pulled in my favours. I did yeah. pay them. I did pay them as well. I pulled in all these favours. We had two, maybe three run-throughs, loads of tech. There's a huge scene in it where, you know, there's bombs and explosions and all sorts of things happening and shouting and all the rest of it. And I'm talking over it and I'm telling you the story. And I'm in the story and I'm telling you the story. And there's cues flying everywhere. So there's a million people in the audience with laptops, maybe, before it all happens. And um, we had our dress rehearsal at 9 o'clock on my birthday. And we were finished by 10.15. And then I did a run-through that went like this. I got this bit. Right. And, and then this here. happened. It was like a top and tail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I, and then it went like this, Jane. And it went... And then... Um, <laughs> and then I'm here, and then I'm, then I'm, then I'm, then I'm, then I'm here, and then the audience came in. Yeah. And the audience came in, and I had to go behind the flats while they all came in, and it was like a bunch of 16-year-olds. And I was so frightened, my whole body was in pain. Yeah. And I had, I had to make a deal with myself. If you need to run away because it's horrific, and you have no clue what happens next, just turn your back, your shit together. Yeah. And then... Just go from the next bit of the story you yeah. remember. Yeah. Well, that is always the way, right? You can go up. The The bad part is that normally if you're doing a play and you go up on your lines, there's another actor that can feed the lines back to you. Oh, wait. Sorry, we have a question. Was, Was it more scary, scary to be here for the inauguration or opening, or opening the, the play? Oh! <laughs> opening the play. So I'll tell you about the inauguration. Oh, God. Uh, it wasn't scary, the inauguration, because I, I knew what side my politics lies on it's a side that most artists i suppose which is pretty anti anti drunk um but no it's definitely scarier opening the play maybe i should talk about that first and then i'll talk about the inauguration is that all right yeah yeah you can do whatever you want this is your floor <laughs> or um, your tub. <laughs> the tub um yeah it was definitely scarier opening the play because it's a real person because she has a healing catharsis ritual attached to this play going out into, into the public arena because it's breaking a silence. And I also knew that I wanted... Oh, that's all right. Silence. I also knew that well, I wanted... we can't because it's hot tub. <laughs> so, Q, bubbles. <laughs> oh, um, my gosh. Elizabeth, Shirley, Jesse, Jill, Jill, and Shirley. And Nina. Two Shirley's. And Nina. Hi, oh. you guys. Um, we were just, somebody just asked me, is it scarier trying to meet Trump at the inauguration? 
and talk about sexual assault in front of him, or was it scarier opening the play? And I was just answering, yes, it was scarier opening the play and trying to meet Trump. I think really that whole inauguration thing was more of a trying to get the person behind it was really behind the issue of the play, which was great. That she has become an ally. But it was a real mess. It was such a dog's dinner. I was so um, hoping to thanks Susan make something happen while I was there, you know, and it, it was it was just never going to have that agenda attached to it. So I, I tried to make it happen. I've been clearing parties for four years talking about sexual assault, so you'd think I'd really know how to do it, and I do, but there was such a pressure to try and bring it up there. I made some, I don't know, I made some waves, I got cross about it the next day about, you know, what was really expected and what's really going to happen, and it all turned out for the good. You know, Mary, we got honestly, more out of it than we, than we could ever have done if we had actually spoken. What do you think would have changed? In reality, nothing. So okay. you well, do the best you can do in a situation. Hi, Cindy. Pleasure. Hi, Elizabeth. Hello. Um, you know what I mean. You do the best in a situation, yeah. and but 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 it was a gift that you were given to be there in the first place and have mm -hmm. your voice heard. But you're not responsible for whether it's heard or it changes anything. Even if it could, yeah. it was it was scheduled to be really. She knew that the sponsors would never go for it. So I was somebody that she could go, oh, oh, Mary's an actor, she can talk for a minute uh, and, yeah, yeah. and plug me in. So yeah. it was all prepared kind of yeah. thing. But it, you know, it just couldn't yeah. come off like that. The whole evening went, ah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, if I had, people were so drunk by eight yeah. o'clock of an inauguration. But how cool you, I mean, to be a part of that, just to see what happens behind the curtain. Mm. It was really exciting. Yeah, it was, I mean, people would recoil at the word Obamacare. Yeah. Never mind everything else, yeah. you know. And. Um, Actually, the people who uh, were were they? I think they were gun lobbyists. Mm. They sold guns, actually. They were the sweetest. The sweetest people from that. Well, you know, honestly. Cheers. Cheers. Bob comes from Oklahoma. I'm not supposed to gesture. Um, Bob comes from Oklahoma, and they have a very strong gun, gun culture there. But mm. everybody I've ever met from Oklahoma has been lovely. You know, really wonderful people. It's just. A different perception of yeah, you've grown up with it, or it's a different constitution, yeah. or yeah. the reason why it's there in the first place is, is you know, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. I know I'm not surprised to hear they're they're lovely, and southern people tend to be very lovely. Yeah, they really are. So, and a lot of southern people own guns. <laughs> Am I making a generalization? <laughs> I apologize. Southern's I don't think it's bad, but you know. bad southern good. good Trump, you know, terrible. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. That's the gins. But, so, what happens now with the play? What happens now? Um, we, as a result of doing the three shows that we did, um, we also, we, can I just say one thing? We Skyped the real Donna Davis in on oh. the Q&A. Oh, that's cool. Here's oh, that's one really thing cool. that I knew she needed to hear about it. From having done Holy Hell with Will, what's difficult about having gone through a terrible trauma is that if there's no public acknowledgement of it, you never know how it affects somebody else. Yeah. You talking about it gives such permission. We got yeah. 50 letters and we had 100 audience. Yeah. And many of them said, this helped me with what I went through. So I needed to know that she knew right. that it wasn't all for nothing. Right. Whatever she'd gone through was not, it was now. And her trust in you was well placed. Lucky, yeah. yeah. I'm very privileged about that. Yeah, that's not a mistake. But, um, yeah, she... Hi, Chris! <laughs> Hello, Chris. Sorry, I don't know why I'm laughing. Jim! Um, what happens with the play now, though, after all that, is that she will be on board for those Q&As in the future. We... The difficult thing about theatre is, even if it's like... Theatre? Theatre? <laughs> Lend me five pounds, <laughs> I'm <laughs> to the Royal Shakespeare Company. Mm. Um, yeah, the difficult thing about it is that there's not much money, but it's well placed to find what little there is. Well, right. Yeah. So the plan is that we do the Fringe next year. Nice. We really, we would hope and love to have a fund which is called Made in Scotland, but it's for the eight best shows nationally. But it means it platforms you and all these promoters from the USA and loads of different countries yeah. come and they see it in the right way, in the right environment, with the right audience. Right. It's the right. Everybody's funded to do the Fringe, which is like, you know, gold. Yeah. 
So if you know, we're hoping to go for funding to tour it next year and try and create an opportunity to bring it here because I don't want to do it just any old way. It has to be done the right way, and that takes years. It does, as we know. As we know, it takes yeah. you know, it's taken four years so far, but it's paid off. Yeah, yeah. and you know, it, it's the reinforcement you get or the assurance you get from people that say it mattered to me. You know, I mean, that's really the payoff and. We had it with we yeah, had it with like, Method, and it was just the same sort of thing where yeah. I, I spent four years, you know, going ah oh, Method addiction. Yeah. And people were like, I've got a story. I've got a story. I got to tell you a story. Hey, I've got a story, and it continues. And I just had somebody write something recently. Hello, Amy. Hi, Amy. Um, they wrote something recently that that they said, oh, we you know when uh, I, Method addiction's on the on the rise, <laughs> and it's frustrating to me that nobody's talking about it, and we I. I remember screening down in film out San Diego. Uh, uh, we screened a powerful film called Method that every gay man should see because this is no joke. And that film was hard to watch and it's hard to get through, but yeah. for a reason. And I was like, all these years later, then somebody's remembering and saying. And when we made the movie, we got people reached out to us and said, I went into rehab because. Of your film, wow. uh, you my can't... daughter went into rehab because of your film. I sent my clients into rehab because of your film. So you know, it's that kind of Does stuff that... that makes it worthwhile. Because that... you don't make any money. You know, it's it's a tough call, but I would say that those kind of things are much much more viable. Much more viable than getting accepted to a festival, or getting on a much more viable. Or, you know, I like that actually, too. But I mean, <laughs> yeah, yes. We're all human. <laughs> of course, we're not doing it purely out of like deep no, compassion. No, darling, no. These are compelling stories. Yes, it's our career to give them the dignity they deserve. Hi, Katie. Hello. Uh, um, <laughs> what? Is no. that? Mary. Hello. 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 I'm pretending to be sober. Um, but yeah, it is. Mm. It is more rewarding because I know awards a, are arbitrary. Like somebody is touched by it, somebody else isn't. Somebody loved it, it mattered. Somebody else is like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? You know what I mean? Like, somebody somebody recently, I think it was Roxanne Reyes, who uh, emailed me, and she's like, you know, Jane, you're not going to make everybody happy. Yeah, yeah, you, you should know? never try. Well, just try to just make, do what you just, do. Yeah, just do what you do. And you know, if it's terrible, then just do something else. Yeah, it's never terrible. Well, you know, it's no, 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 my, no, my stuff is never oh, no. <laughs> Speak for yourself, Jane. My stuff <laughs> can be terrible sometimes. God. No, that's not true. You're brilliant. Um, yeah, I there's something happening. I don't know. It's such a weird career, really. I, and most of the time, I'm locked in a cupboard, talking. Right. Um, I'm doing a book called Must Love More Kilts with um, a really lovely writer called Angela Quarell, who I love. She's great. And but what yes, is that about? That I have, for some reason, tapped to seem of historical romance audiobooks. <gasps> oh, yes, you so have. I, you I, have that voice. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of Talk to us in the planes of his chest. There's usually there's some smut around page 200. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of bodices. There's a lot of um, Scottish gossamer. heather. Is there gossamer? No. Oh yeah, so, but my... I'd say gossamer thighs have popped up oh, before, yeah. if you know what I mean. Yeah, there's there's that. Basically, I because I'm looking after my dad at the moment. You know, he's 92, and that is my job. Um, but I can also still work as a voice actor from a cupboard. Right. I talk for a while and then come out and somebody gives me a check. Right. I'm holding this like it's a prop. <laughs> Hold on. Somebody gives you a check and good on them because you know what? You're good at what you do. You're a great actress. All right. You have a wonderful voice for that kind of thing. So you can actually... Um, it's really hard when you're just listening. It's one of the reasons mm. why stage readings are very difficult to pull up. Yeah, they're boring. Oh, wait, there's a question. question? Do you prefer material in specific genres such as comedy or horror comedy like Crazy Bitches? Or do you prefer <laughs> issue, issue oriented, oriented material. material? Or do I prefer issue oriented material? I can't think of anything worse than issue oriented material. Explain. Because all I would love to do is a compelling story. Okay. I'm turned on by, like I said, transformative stories. The stuff where actually you feel like you've maybe touched somebody's life in a real way. In a, in a way to do with social justice, maybe. But it's not because I'm some, you know, gigantically compassionate person. It is because I like a compelling story at the end of the day. And anything that screams issue, I usually run away from, to be honest. 
Because I think it's about knocking somebody on the head in the audience about something. I think doing a show about sexual assault had to be a comedy. And it's oh. not an out and out comedy, but it has moments of humor, it has to. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And everything dark has a tone of light, and everything yes. light has a tone of dark, yeah. because we can't, life we can't is stick with it for, that, for long enough yeah. as an audience as well. And, and, and I, think, like, I, I think that question, uh, issue-oriented, was, you know, what, really you, what you were saying was, do you want to make movies that you're passionate about that they can change lives? And I think that that's what that... Oh, it's yeah. very easy to say issue-oriented, Did I come across as a bit like... No, 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 not at all. But I think that it's... There's a line, right? Because the way you tell a story is either going to be perceived as issue oriented, in which case from a commercial standpoint it's kind of dead in the water, or it's going to be perceived as a compelling story that changes minds. Yeah, I like, it has, it, like I, I know what you mean, like something, like you would extrapolate from yeah. method, there's all of the stuff that's yeah. going to inform and educate yeah. about method, so we can say there's an issue there, but it's not the primary thing. If it's but the it's primary a compelling thing, story, right. If it's the primary thing, then it makes me go, it's not yeah. art, it's um, something else. It's a documentary. Yeah. But, in fairness, you you made, uh, you wrote a play about an experience that somebody had that if properly laid out would change, that might have ability, the ability to heal or to change perception or to make people think. Yeah. And I think that that's what they're talking about. It's just that idea that we are, there is something powerful about doing that, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's so, and, it, and, it, and it feels good. So privileged. And to you want to change something. Yeah. The conversation, maybe, whatever yeah. it is. Although I didn't go into it thinking, I want to change how this, you know, how we look at and understand and deal no. with and heal sexual assault, particularly in the military. You were going for the heart. Some, weren't you? Yes. And also, I would also say... Is that, your heart over there? Yeah. Uh, 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 you're going for the um, heart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we haven't had that much to drink. It's, uh, I swear to God, uh, half a martini. You're going for the heart. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I was also just wanting to explore, like I said, explore some boundary in myself. Mm -hmm. I think, here it is, mm -hmm. it would be my deepest fear. So something about doing the play exercised it for me oh. and made me, and also when I first came to LA and you know, I'm in LA just for a little short time at the moment, um, I was a massage therapist for years. I don't know this theater in the UK, maybe a little bit of TV and stuff, but it's really hard to make it down. You have to start from the bottom again and work up. So I was like, oh, I have to be able to eat. So I was a massage therapist and I moved into a psychiatric unit to do yeah, that. I remember that. <laughs> And all of my people were sexual assault um, survivors. But one of them, I'll never forget her, she was probably actually the first one I ever treated, but she talked about it as if she could take off a coat. It was so distant from her, she had so integrated it, she wasn't there for that. She was there for something else, it was sort oh, of vaguely right. related. Yeah. But I, I was sort of flabbergasted because something in me went, I don't know how you'd ever get over that. And no surprise that I would meet somebody who needed to get over it. And we paired up together right. so that she could get over it and I could ghost through it and be her so she didn't have to be the person that everybody pointed to. Right. You know, it's kind of a... Right. There's also a strange dance between actors and soldiers because an actor's job is to forensically navigate empathy in order to mine stuff for your job. That's beautiful. I As love that. A soldier's job is you have to turn off empathy, otherwise you can't drop a bomb on people. Yeah, it's true. You can't do your job. It's I mean, really I mean, maybe I'm simplifying it too much, and I, I, uh, I'm sorry if that's, I'm not making soldiers out to be people who don't have empathy at all, but it's a very different relationship. Um, and we're, the two, an actor and a soldier together was a beautiful dance in some ways. Talk about the book you're working on. The book? Um, it's an audio book of a, somebody who I really like. Um, she's called Angela Quarrells. I do an audiobook probably once every six weeks and it keeps, you know, the wolf from the door and it's fun. You know, I get to play maybe 14 different characters, you know, some of them are blokes, some of them are serving maids and, you know, and they're from all over the place. So it's called Must Love More Kilts and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a bodice ripping, cracking romance set in historical medieval Scotland. So it is actually a narrative. You're not doing a documentary style book or a historical... Oh, no, no. It's an audio book. Oh. So, you know, it's Kindle but it, but and it's, Audible but it's, and all that. But it's a romance. Yes. Oh, oh, they, oh, they, oh, they all are. 
I think once you do a few, other authors chime in and oh, they go, Oh, I thought you wrote oh. it or you oh, were... No, no, oh, 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 no, oh, not oh. mine. No, okay. no, not mine. No, but I, I, you know, that's just I'm writing one. one. Are you? Mm -hmm. You're writing a book. Mm -hmm. Well, no. I wrote like 30 <laughs> pages. <laughs> That's but enough. I've got other things to write and other things to deal with, but it's part of a... Hey, Jane's getting I'm, booky. I'm going to get you to voice it. Yeah, you can. I can do it from the coverage. Yeah. I've got it down to a fine art. Yeah. I have to finish it, but it's <laughs> it's related to a feature that I have. Oh. That's a, kind of a spooky romance, like a reverse ghost. A reverse ghost? Right. An so un -ghost. the person's already dead oh. when they attach to the person that they loved. Oh. Oh. It's very spooky, scary, creepy, sexy. Doesn't sound like passionate. You? Huh. No, yeah, it's totally divergent. But um, why did that pop up? But I, everything. Did you just go? Oh, actually, I'm writing this, and it's sort of coming out like a book. Or did you go? Oh, no, I want to write I, a book. I thought do about doing the book in accompaniment to it because it's such a romance novel sort of huh. thing. Well, my and there's uh, yeah, and there's um, yeah, and then there's <coughs> it's the backstory to the movie. It's basically. Oh, right okay. In. So usually it happens yeah. the other way around, right? Yeah. You do the movie and then you write the book. Yeah. Nicole's well, I, I've book. got the movie written, the script written. I thought I'd do the book and then sell the whole thing together. But, um, but here, just quickly, because I know we're all here about Mary. But I wrote Aren't this we? thing. So I was visiting my parents, and I, they keep me up in. They kept me up in the attic. My parents. I stayed. Oh, 31 minutes. Okay. Uh, they kept me up at the attic. Uh huh. No, that's the wrong way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> I slept in the attic. I loved the attic in my house in Cape Cod. And I had, there was they this put old... put me in the attic. <laughs> my parents put me in the attic. So in I, had Cape to, Cod. I had to write yeah. my way out. But it was a four-poster bed. And it's very old. Everything oh. in the house is really old because it's all my family's passed downs. And Are you a posho? No, not at all. Oh, really? My parents were uh, academics. My dad was a... Pretty posh, if you ask me. There's yeah. a four-post to bed in this story already, and some posh... And anyway, let's listen. Yeah, let's listen. So, I'm by myself. I'm feeling a little horny. <laughs> I decide... Da -da -da -da. Maybe I'll just get off today. It's sex with someone you love. So I'm imagining, in my head, this imaginary, ghostly, I can't really see them figure... Could be anybody. ...doing Handy. something... And, you know, all of a sudden I went, oh, this is a movie. <laughs> In the middle of my experience, I was like, this is a movie. <laughs> and I got up and I'm like, where's my pen and paper? <laughs> stop. Everybody stop. <laughs> It's just so would, ridiculous. But on your deathbed, but sorry, somebody would be like, "Okay, so Ivy, yeah, can you transplant?" And you'd be like, "Wait a yeah, minute, right. this is a movie." <laughs> it was. It was ridiculous. But that's how a lot of times my movie ideas come to me. Is yeah. that I'm in the middle of something and I'm like, oh. "No, it's like how what am I? You, how come your movies are so gory?" Here's that's. I mean, not that that's a problem or anything. You know, I they're think not. I made one gory movie. Crazy bitches. Well, you've talked. I mean, since we've been here, though, we've been talking about stabbings, deaths. I mean, in the, con okay, in the context, the of, in the context yeah. of like old scripts, new scripts. No, that's the Guinevere Turner thing. That's, oh, okay. 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 So, so she did American Psycho. It's gonna lo logically go to that. Oh, all right. Um, yeah, but all my shorts were issue oriented. <laughs> all my shorts were about family or something I cared about that I wanted to talk to or romance. Hmm. Uh, I didn't get into horror until I did Ameri to uh, Crazy Bitches. Huh. And actually, that wasn't necessarily... That like, was comedy. Yeah, that was... Well, that was something you went, I'm going to see if I can do this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And I just thought it was a good mechanism to tell the story. Yeah. You know, to explore the concept. But What's um, nice for you? I looked at your boots oh, when I said these that. Guys <laughs> What's nice for you guys? <laughs> These guys are bored with it. They've heard it a thousand oh, times. Oh, they have? Oh, yeah, they don't sorry. care. Yeah. Um, Crazy Bitches web series, which you can contribute to today. Yes. I do need help. I need help. On so many levels. Uh, but so mainly many. with Crazy Bitches web series. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and then I've got five films in development and this, ho this virtual reality horror thing that hopefully will get finished and get submitted to Sundance. And, I want uh, somebody to also say, oh, by the way, please, can you just come and direct this? Please, can you come and write that? Yeah, I would love that. You're so way overqualified for that situation to descend anytime soon. As well as your own stuff, you know. Yeah. It's only going to help, isn't it? 
Absolutely. I mean, I pursue it. It's just, you know, it's hard. I don't have an agent. But, you know, you don't have an agent. You make your own way. We need to do... So, cra so actually, uh, crazy. Crazy Mary. <laughs> is that one? Mary is and I were going to do become? Uh, resting bitchy face oh, videos. Yeah. We need to do that. Resting crazy face. Yeah. yeah. Resting, resting crazy bitch uh. face. Are we at time? We're at time. We're at time. I was having fun, but we're at time. Probably partly because of Mary and partly because of the cocktail. Uh, <laughs> I think but we we're do, clean now, anyway. <clears throat> we do have to go to dinner with Nio Wallace, who will be joining me next Saturday, this coming Saturday. I'm still trying to determine the time, but I think noon. And uh, we'll be oh, Andrea says, come to Canada and do the show there. Oh, why not? She should. Why not? Uh, it's just a matter of getting it sponsored and getting it to happen. It's all about, um, unfortunately, it's all about the money and the right venue and the right way. Yeah. Yes, I have every intention of doing it in every place in the world that ever has any kind of history with problems with, you know, MST or any other kinds of sexual assault. So I'll or, be everywhere. Or it's just anybody that has a great theater that likes great theater. Yeah. I mean, it's a great show yeah, first, yeah, right? Yeah. So it should be everywhere. Thank I'm you. hoping it'll go everywhere. Uh, Government will pay. Well, in her country, the government will pay. Andrea. A little bit. Not in my, not in our country. Yeah. Um, take care, girls. It was nice hanging out tonight. Good to hang out with you too. Thank you. Oh, there's Pat. Hello. Hi, Pat. Come to Florida. Okay, we adore you guys. We're gonna sign off and go have plant-based, plant-based <laughs> food. Which I'm you terribly, guys all know how I feel about that. I'm so terribly brave, being, you know, paleo. Paleo, and I'm brave doing it yeah thank you um it's an irritating thing to have no no I'm, I'm totally i'm totally with it so adore you guys and we will see you if you join us it's saturday i think i'm going to do it at noon so those of you doing saturday football might take a break and uh more later okay bye, bye.